What's up guys, it's Bliskin Boy here, and um, I'm working on a video, uh, a look at Venom Snake and a little bit of analysis on his character, but I figure in the meantime, since I haven't posted in a while, I'll post my thoughts on Ground Zeroes, and specifically the guns within the game. Now, I made a video on Phantom Pain's guns and how they don't really act like guns, but that's not really the case for Ground Zeroes. So let's just walk through, talk about why these guns are great, and then just rank them. So I guess this is another one of my top 10 lists. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy, and let's hop right into it. Now, just to give you an idea, we're going to be rating these guns by their uh, value in stealth, their value in combat, and their versatility. Versatility pretty much means uh, the amount of context you can apply it to, and mostly whether or not it's CQC compatible. When I say CQC compatible, I mean uh, you can draw it out while you're using guys and human shield, which in this game, uh, more so than kind of paid, is a almost dominant strategy. If you get caught and you have a decent pistol, and you can take it out and uh, handle guys coming at you with that human shield, it pretty much uh, subverts uh, the odds in combat scenarios. So yeah, stealth, combat, and versatility. Let's do this. So coming in at the number 10 spot, we're going to talk about the shotgun within this game, which is a 12 gauge uh, pump action. Now, I forgot to mention how in Phantom Pain, shotguns also work pretty well, or at least how a shotgun should. Yeah, within the context of this game, uh, this gun ranks so low, even though it's a beast in combat, um, you can't really use it in much else besides that. The range on it is actually pretty decent, uh, but the limited ammo uh, the low fire rate that comes with pump action, and the fact that it will expose you no matter when you use it, um, puts it lower on this list. Now again, it's great to have on you, just like, especially for the uh, assassination mission where you have to go after those two targets, uh, just to have in case you like screw up on the stealth and you just need to like run out to them and gun them down real fast, this is a good thing to have on you. So yeah, number 10, the pump action shotgun. Coming in at number 9 is pretty much the better version of the shotgun we just went over. It's the Urgun. It's uh, pretty much a pocket shotgun. If you've been watching this channel, you know I'm a fan of those. Uh, but within this game, uh, the shotgun ranks higher than the standard 12 uh, gauge pump action. One, because it's non lethal, which will give you a score bonus when you're playing through missions. And two, it's CQC compatible, so you can use it when you grab guys and use it for hostages. It's also a lot more easy to manage than the other shotgun and I might be wrong but I believe this gun has a lot more range because on the mission where you have to rescue uh, Kojima from the helicopter you can actually just use this handgun and roll throughout the entire time and it'll serve you just well even though you're on the chopper shooting down at the base. So because of that added range uh, and the fact that you get all those bonuses of being non-lethal and CQC compatible uh, this gun takes the ninth spot. The Urgan Shotgun Pistol. Taking the number 8 spot is a gun that I'm not going to call by its in-game name, I'm just going to call it the FAL. Um, if you want to know why, just check out my FNC video where I talk about the weird names that these guns are given and their weird placement in a US military base. But anyways, in terms of uh, function and all the benefits, uh, this gun is easy to find, even when you play on hard mode, all you have to do is take care of one enemy and you can pick this off of them. Uh, it's got decent range, it's reliable enough, it does serious damage, it's not going to be like in Phantom Pain where it feels like you're just shooting pellets at these guys. Um, again, the range is decent, the sight system is great, and it's a lot more versatile than the shotgun. And again, because everyone carries it, you're going to be able to find ammo for this thing quite easily. So yeah, the number 8 spot goes to the foul. Coming in at number 7 is the only sniper rifle that's in this game. It's the MD-2000. Now, unlike uh, Phantom Pain, this sniper isn't going to be as versatile or as customizable as they are over there. It's also not suppressed, so you can't just use it to dominate the game. Uh, it serves its purpose and it's really shoehorned into one role, which is, you know, sniping and it's really good at doing just that. It's got spectacular damage being a two-shot kill at most, um, but it's low on this list simply because you gotta have decent range with it, 
it's got limited ammo, and again, if you use it, it will alert, alert the entire base. However, again, on that mission, we have to take those two guys out, or if you just want to clear an area ahead of time, this is a great gun to use. At number 6, we have the Carl Gustav uh, rocket launcher, which serves as a more versatile version of the sniper rifle. You can use this to take out anti-aircraft, um, vehicles, choppers, even other guys charging at you. So again, it alerts everyone to your position, but if they're already alerted and they're coming at you and you have a good position, you can hold off very well with this gun. The range on it is also spectacular. So it's a great gun to have. Again, similarly to the shotgun that was at number 10, it's a good gun to have for if you're caught and if you need to get out of a pinch or you need something just to even the odds. Coming in at number 5, I just want to give props to Ground Zeroes for being one of the only games to give the uh, 45 caliber, uh, you know, the credit it deserves. Uh, unlike most games where this caliber will just pepper enemies down, this gun has the stopping power and has the force that you'd expect of a 45 in real life. So it's not like the 45 in Snake Eater where you just empty a mag and they're still kind of writhing in pain. This one here, two shots and even armored enemies on the ground. It's a great pistol, uh, the only reason it's not higher is that it's not suppressed, but for combat, this is one of the best weapons to have on you in the game. It's powerful, it's got a decent enough range, and it's CQC compatible. I don't know what more you could want out of a handgun, especially in a Metal Gear game. Coming in at number 4, we're going to have what I'm going to call the FAL Custom. Now again, if you're wondering why I'm calling this gun the FAL, check out my FNC video. I'll put the link in the description. But yeah, this has all the benefits of the standard assault rifle, except it has the range of the sniper rifle, and comes equipped with a grenade launcher. So it's a combination of the uh, FAL assault rifle, the MD2000, and the Carl Gustav. So this is an all-in-one kind of quote-unquote ultimate combat weapon that this game gives you if you get S ranks. Now the drawbacks are it's not suppressed so it'll immediately bring everyone to your attention but if you're gonna carry a foul around anyways and you're gonna play that way you might as well pick this thing up because it's three guns in one. Coming in at number three we have the Trank Pistol and if you've watched any of my videos you know I'm a fan of the Trank Pistol within the Metal Gear context because the consequences of bodies being found are lower, minimal at best. Uh, it's internally suppressed, so you don't need to worry about it running out. Uh, for some reason, you can find tranquilizer rounds around the map. And if you can plant your headshots, you know, the enemy goes right down. But if not, you can hit a whole bunch of guys in the legs and they'll all just start dropping like flies one by one. So it's the ultimate stealth weapon, I dare say, in any Metal Gear game. But in this game, it gets the third spot just because it's lacking in versatility. Um, now, I don't want that to come out wrong because, again, this is CQC compatible and just an overall great gun. I'd say it's the second greatest sidearm. But um, if you are in a combat scenario and you don't have anything else but this, you're kind of screwed, especially on the hard difficulty if you're not playing with uh, reflex mode. Um, but besides that, this is the ultimate stealth pistol, and because of that, it ranks number three high up on this list. Coming up at night, uh, number two, we have my personal favorite weapon in this game. It's the suppressed 9mm SMG. Now, this is, in my opinion, one of the most versatile guns. It's CQC compatible. You can use it in combat situations. Um, the suppressor is reliable as long as you don't just spam the trigger in full auto mode. If you keep this thing controlled and just get your headshots as you're sneaking around, it's great. But if you get caught and you need to take a hostage and handle a whole bunch of guys, this thing is great as well. All around, uh, this almost won the number one spot, uh, but it's at the number two spot instead, simply because of its range limitations. That being said, let's get to the number one. Coming up at number one, we have the FNC rifle. Now, this is pretty much everything I said about the uh, SMG, except you get that greater range. It's suppressed, it works as a combat rifle, uh, giving it its versatility. It's a lot easier to manage around the corners than the FAL or the FAL Custom. Um, 
if you couple this with either the SMG or the Trank Pistol, you're pretty much unstoppable in this game. Which is why the Trank Pistol and this gun is what you get on normal. You can disable security cameras with it, you can take out guys with headshots or just spam it into them in combat. Uh, the only drawback to this gun is that it isn't CQC compatible, but again, because of its crazy range and just overall being the best balanced gun in this game, I have to give it the number one spot without a doubt. So yeah guys, that was me on the top 10 weapons in Ground Zeroes. Um, you can think of this as a list talking about, you know, one, appreciating the guns in Ground Zeroes, and two, uh, talking about the guns that you should prioritize getting if you want to go for that S rank, if you want to have that maximum efficiency, or if you just want to be an unstoppable killing machine on your playthroughs. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe, check out that FNC video if you were confused at anything I was saying when I went over the uh, quote-unquote fouls or just the main rifles in the game. But yeah. Subscribe, comment if you wish, and I'll see you guys whenever I get that Venom Snake video already. I'm kind of swamped with exams, but hopefully I get it out soon. But yeah, thanks for watching. You guys take care. This has been Pliskin. Over and out.